Hey guys, welcome back to a special holiday episode of Nerd Crave, and today we're going to look back, way back to 2005, and look at the Nintendo Power Holiday Buyer's Guide. I want to take a look at what people were looking at back in 2005, what they were hoping to get in their Christmas stockings. Uh, at this festive time of year. So we can see front cover here, 2005 Holiday Buyer's Guide. The very first page here is kind of weird. Has anybody ever heard of Elf Bowling? Elf Bowling, one and two. Santa says, stuff it in your stocking. Two holiday classics in one package. I don't think I've ever heard of this game by Ignition Entertainment, but uh, apparently available for the Game Boy Advance and the Nintendo DS. So uh, don't forget to get that one in your stocking, boys and girls. And moving on here, we've got the, uh, uh, the index and stuff. It's kind of interesting. You can see uh, in the middle here, I mentioned this before in another video. It was really popular back then before YouTube, before all of us kind of social media influencers, you can kind of hear the air quotes in my voice. I kind of hate the term influencer, but these people here, the reviewers in these magazines, these were our video game influencers before the days of YouTube and the internet in general. I mean, of course we did have the internet in 2005, but uh, you know, YouTube was, if it existed, it was not much of anything yet. and. We got all of our information from these magazines and, you know, flyers and stuff. I did a video a couple of weeks ago about the 2023 or 2022 GameStop Holiday Gift Guide. Um, and, and I was kind of talking about it back then. But uh, so these guys, Stephen Grimm, uh, you know, uh, Animal Crossing. Plus, I'll be giving it to my pals back in Wisconsin. Mario Kart, DS, Trauma Center, Mario and Luigi. So these are games that he has picked, I guess, that he's reviewed. Uh, that he wants to, uh, you know, show people or whatever. These guys are the influencers of this time. Guys that now probably nobody remembers their names, but guys like Andy Myers, Chris Shepard, these guys worked for Nintendo Power, and these are the guys that you would develop a relationship with on paper as you poured through the pages of your Nintendo Power magazine, you would be looking for the reviews by your favorite reviewer, the one that you could identify with, just like it is today on YouTube, where you pick your favorite handful of YouTubers that you can identify with, that you know your tastes align with, and that sort of thing. So moving on here... Uh, okay, so we've got some ratings here, starting at the beginning for the non-conformist. I don't know what that means, but gifts for the non-conformist. I guess somebody who wants to be different. Uh, Dance Dance Revolution Mario Mix. So 2005, uh, we're still looking at the GameCube era here and the beginning of the DS. Uh, Nintendogs. Nintendogs was huge on the DS. That was an absolute revolution. Uh, they're rating it at an 8.5. And uh, it's funny because, you know, everybody now thinks of it as a pretty casual, silly, stupid game. But back then, this was, you know, the, the hot ticket item coming into holiday 2005. Uh, WarioWare Touch. Now, there's a good one. Um, Nintendo DS's innovative control features and WarioWare's flood of zany micro games proved to be a perfect match in an all new touch controlled collection of three second gems. The fun is figuring out how to succeed in each of more than 200 micro games and in unlocking new game collections and dozens of souvenirs. WarioWare Touched gets a 9.0. Uh, that's pretty darn high. Metroid Prime, Prime Pinball here is getting a 9.5. Of course, you know, these ratings are coming from Nintendo-specific reviewers. Uh, so you gotta take them a bit with a grain of salt when, you know, Nintendo Power rates a game on a Nintendo console. You gotta wonder just exactly how much bias is actually there. But, uh, Metroid Prime Pinball was a pretty darn good game, but I can't imagine really giving any pinball game a 9.5. I mean, it's basically a distraction. Uh, fun and pretty good on the DS with the dual screens, uh, but I don't think it's nearly a perfect pinball game. Uh, I think there are a lot of other pinball collections, even on the DS, that are better than Metroid Prime Pinball. But hey, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe it's, uh, you know, with the benefit of looking back, 
uh, over time, this was pretty early in the Nintendo DS's lifespan, so maybe this was the best one available at the time? I don't know. We've got WarioWare Twisted here at an 8.5, coming in a little bit below WarioWare Touched. Um, this is on the Game Boy Advance, so it's maybe acceptable that they would rate an older gen game a little bit lower uh we see trauma center under the knife um i really enjoy the trauma center games and this is the ds version that they're reviewing uh if a surgeon accidentally dropped warioware touched into a patient and then sewed him up we'd likely have something like trauma center that's an interesting analogy actually because you really do sort of mini games in the trauma center games as well these are really fun games actually especially with touchscreen on the DS. They were fantastic. They were fantastic on the Nintendo Wii as well, but that wasn't about to come out for another couple of years yet. Uh, but they're giving it a 9.0, which is surprising because to this day, you can pick up just about any of the Trauma Center games for literally five bucks. And, uh, you know, that's kind of the definition of a hidden gem at... Uh, at this point, if you can pick up a game that was rated a 9 out of 10 for 5 bucks, you're doing pretty good. Uh, we have the Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, uh, the first game here. Gets a 8.0 rating. Of course, this is a legendary Capcom franchise that carried all the way through the DS and 3DS. We even have some of these games on the Nintendo Switch. Very popular games. Dom Clancy Splinter Cell Chaos Theory. Now, they were probably pretty impressed at the time with these games, and I do enjoy the Splinter Cell games, but I don't know whether I would have given them an 8.0. I don't know. What do you think? Have you played the Splinter Cell games on the GameCube? They're also mentioning the Nintendo DS version here, and they both got an 8.0. Now, the Nintendo DS version was probably pretty impressive for a handheld game back in the day, but going back to that now, the game's just not fun, folks. Like, it's just not fun uh, you know, playing such a kind of gritty version of the game. Uh, let's see, what else have we got here? For the platforming fan, Donkey Kong Jungle Beat on the GameCube. When I first heard about Donkey Kong Jungle Beat, I dismissed it as a gimmick. The game is absolutely brilliant, though. It's both comfortingly familiar and unique. You know, Jungle Beat is a lot of fun, and when they remastered it for the Wii and took out the bongo controls and just gave it regular controls, it was a pretty good game that way too, but let's not diminish those bongos. Those were a lot of fun for the, what, four games that were actually compatible with them. Uh, you know, Jungle Beat is fantastic. As a platform goes that you control with rhythm elements, it's really, really neat. It was innovative. I absolutely love it. If you have a GameCube and you haven't played this game, you owe it to yourself to pick up those bongos for 30 or 40 bucks and get this game because 9.0, not kidding. I completely agree with that rating. Uh, Kirby Canvas Curse, another 9.0. So you can see here... You know, these guys are pretty generous with their ratings. Kirby Canvas Curse was good, don't get me wrong. Uh, you know, as 2D Kirby games go, you know, it's 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 pretty darn good. I'm... Yeah, what can you say about it? I mean, Kirby's Kirby, right? But I don't think I would have given Canvas Curse a 9. I would say more like a 7.5. Resident Evil 4... Uh, gets a solid 10 out of 10. I think a lot of people would agree it's not my favorite Resident Evil, but uh, uh, props to that chainsaw controller for sure. That was uh, pretty darn cool back in the day, and they're pretty expensive now. Uh, we get some mention of Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap on the Game Boy Advance. Um, Minish Cap is fantastic, and you know, people have been screaming ever since the Link's Awakening remake on the Switch. People have been screaming for something similar for Minish Cap because that game seems to have been sort of abandoned on the Game Boy Advance at this point. And 9.5, I tend to agree, fantastic Zelda game that is really worth going back to, and I really hope we see something on a Nintendo handheld again. Uh, even if we get Game Boy Advance in the Nintendo Online uh, subscription, that would be okay too, to get Minish Cap, just the GBA version. I would be happy with that, just having it on a current console. Let's see what else we got. For the Thinking Gamer, Battalion Wars. Very, very fun game. 
Uh, Nintendo GameCube. I did prefer uh, Jeepers. Is it, was it called Battalion Wars on the Wii? I think it was Battalion Wars 2, or was it something else? Wars. Same series, though, but uh, I never played the one on the GameCube. I'm surprised it got a 9.0, but I will... Uh, I'll take their word for it. I really should pick it up and play it because I really do love these Advance Wars and that sort of game, uh, the real-time strategy sort of thing. I really enjoy those types of games. Fire Emblem Path of Radiance getting a 9.5. Uh, Fire Emblem's always been a pretty highly rated game, but, uh, you know, I don't know whether it's really a 9.5. I would think more like an 8.5. Um maybe as a pretty unique title on the GameCube. Uh, you know, I would say it definitely is among the upper echelon of games on the GameCube that you could play. But looking back across the history of Fire Emblem, I can think of several games in the series that I like more than Path of Radiance. So 9.5 doesn't give you a lot of room to negotiate. It's pretty damn close to perfect, which I think this game is is not. It's fantastic, but I don't think it's perfect. Uh, Killer7 on the next page here. Um, you know, I think this is uh, one of Suda51's first games, or not first games, but early games, uh, before he got into No More Heroes and that sort of thing. I have this game on Steam. I haven't really messed around with it much yet. I had this idea of making a, a video about games from the GameCube that you can play on Steam, and I might get around to that in the new year. But uh, 8.5 on the Killer7, I know it was well thought of. Um, what are you guys thinking about this list so far? Are you surprised at some of these ratings? Now, keeping in mind, as I said before, you know, the N Nintendo Power guys are kind of biased, I think, to, to really push these ratings up a little bit higher. But um, you can kind of just bump everything down by a point or so, I think, and come up with something pretty realistic. Uh, we've got Star Fox Assault here listed. Uh, for the role-playing uh, gamer, we've got Harvest Moon, more Friends of Mineral Town on the Game Boy Advance. That's a game that I have enjoyed, a sequel to Friends of Mineral Town. And uh, pretty pretty decent game for the Game Boy Advance. I actually enjoy playing this game and the original Friends of Mineral Town on my Steam Deck, emulated, I know, tisk tisk, right? But uh, some of these games are hard to come by now in their original format. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. Now that was an interesting Pokemon game on the GameCube. If you haven't played uh, Pokemon XD, it plays like an adventure Pokemon game. It's really quite interesting. It's one of the more enjoyable experiences outside of the regular uh, Pokemon format that I have experienced. 8.5? I'd probably tend to agree with that. Maybe maybe 8.0. Also worth checking out, Donkey Kong Country 3 on the Game Boy Advance gets an 8. Uh, FIFA Soccer 06 on the DS gets an 8. Fire Emblem the Sacred, Sacred Stones on the Game Boy Advance gets a 9.5. Again, with the pushing it to the almost perfect, uh, I really think anything that's getting above a 9 needs to be like in the top 100 games of all time. Uh, but could it be an 8.5? Yeah, probably. Klonoa 2 on the Game Boy Advance. So we're really at 2005. We're really in the transition period here. We're just before the Wii came out just after the DS came out, so there's a lot of, you know, kind of cross-gen stuff going on here between the Game Boy Advance, uh, during, you know, during an era where apparently the D DS was not going to replace the Game Boy Advance, it was supposed to be complementary, we all know how that worked out. But, uh, so what do you guys think here about some of these recommendations for Christmas presents? If you were to hand this to your mom, uh, in 2005 and tell her that you'll take anything above a 9, would you end up with a game that you actually wanted to play? So, I don't know, just flipping through the rest of this holiday guide here, let's see what we've got. Uh, so we've got uh, some pictures here on the right of the Silver GameCube, the Game Boy Advance SP, which is arguably the best model of the Game Boy Advance, at least as far as the screen is concerned. I personally prefer uh, the original Game Boy Advance just with a modded screen at this point that's backlit and 
a little bit better. We've got the Game Boy Micro here, which came out right at the end of the Game Boy Advance's lifespan, and uh, these are pretty hot commodity now. They're pretty collectible and getting to be expensive. Uh, let me know, did you have a Game Boy Micro back in the day? Uh, what do we got here? Bundle up. So here's the Pokemon XD GameCube bundle. This is pretty rare and expensive. Now, if you can get one of these GameCubes that have the little discs on the top, the you know the different uh, discs with theme for different things. Uh, there's another one here. We got the Smash Bros. Melee bundle set. Uh, includes the game and stuff like that. Some of these, if you can get some of these GameCube. Uh, Consoles complete in box these days. They're getting to be pretty darned expensive uh, We've got a couple different DS models here. We've got the green and the pink with the Nintendogs uh, Mario Kart DS bundle with the red DS of course This is before we got the DS Lite or DSi or anything uh, We've got some players choice now do everybody remember players choice for the love of God Bring back Player's Choice, Nintendo. Like, the Switch needs this. We need Breath of the Wild for 20 or $30. We need Mario Odyssey for 20 or $30. Like, look at what we've got here. All of these Player's Choice games sold back in the day for about $20. Animal Crossing, Metal Gear Solid Twin Snakes, there's an $80 or $90 game. Luigi's Mansion, $60, $70 game today. Can you imagine being able to pick these up for $20 brand new. Sure, they've got the ugly Player's Choice banner across the top of them. Pokemon Coliseum, Player's Choice, still 20 bucks. The first Resident Evil, there's another $80, $90 game. You know, just some incredible stuff here. Uh, and, and Nintendo used to do this. If, if a game did well and sold well, a couple years later, they'd release this Player's Choice which was like a gift, you know, to fans. Here's a here's a cheap copy of a popular game, and they just don't do that anymore. Uh, so here we have a wish list. This basically just gives all the names of the games, and you can check them off on your list, and it shows mom what page it's on or whatever, I guess. Uh, we got some ads for some Pac-Man and Dig Dug Namco games here, and that's it. And and as I was mentioning, uh, if you are interested in seeing uh, more retro magazines, go to this Retro Mag's website. Uh, their goal is to preserve classic video game magazines so they're not lost permanently. People interested in helping out in any capacity and how you can help out is by collecting magazines online that maybe they don't have and submitting them to them. Or if you personally have any physical gaming magazines in your collection, Take the time, break out a scanner, scan those magazines in, convert them to a usable format like PDF or CBR, I'm using the comic book reader format here, uh, which is fantastic, and submit them to retromags.com. It's a worthy cause here because they are preserving history. I'm doing everything I can to preserve the history here as well. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay classy.